Welcome to Desk Geek. Today I wanted to talk about the equipment that I use for my audio on my channel. Now, some of my videos you're watching will have audio from my phone, like this one here, depending on what I'm doing. Some of them will have audio from my downstairs setup, which is really just a uh, blue microphone. And my main cast, though, and you can definitely hear the difference between them, will utilize this setup here, which is a Steinberg USB interface, and nothing fancy here, but it does allow for my AT2020 to interface with my computer USB interface. And what I'm using here is a splitter, so it has stereo sound. And the reason why I went with the splitter um, you can see this goes out into two of the XLR cables there. That was a terrible job filming. There's the two XLR cables, and then these are the settings that I use here. And so I use both input gains since I have that splitter. And that was really because a lot of the software I was using to record did not have the capability to go to a mono channel, so I was only getting sound out of one speaker. So thankfully I you know scrounged around the forums until I found someone who had mentioned just using this splitter and this will send that into the single connection for the microphone here and that goes all the way up my boom arm which is just a Rode boom arm and to my computer itself and this is the AT2020 mic and I actually had a blue microphone before up here and I got rid of that, but I still was able to salvage uh, the anti-shock mount and, of course, just have a cheap filter, pop filter over top. But that's it. That's the sound that I use. And, of course, my favorite speakers, the Klipsch THXs, they're just the simplest. I don't have a million wires everywhere. There's just two of them, and they sound fantastic. Uh, and then for my interface... For headphones, I utilize Audio Technica M40Xs, and they are my favorite headphones that I use. There are better ones, there are more expensive ones, but these are the ones that I could afford and have. So this entire setup is talking about just the audio. We'll run you somewhere around $200 to $250, depending on the deals that you get. That includes the boom arm, the mic, the shock mount, all of that. Uh, if you shop around enough and get the stuff used, you can definitely achieve that price range. If you were to buy it new, it would probably be easily in the 300 plus range. I have a DBX-286S coming to connect to the Steinberg, and I'll be doing another video once that's done. So now I'm going to switch and show you some of the features of the Yamaha Steinberg. I think it's a really fantastic uh, USB interface because it allows you for very inexpensively to get to the sampling rates that you want especially if you're doing like a podcast or something along those lines so you can go from the 44.1 kilohertz all the way to the 192 kilohertz uh, and it's just it's a really good interface and it works it stays on permanently the only thing connected in the back is a USB cord you don't have to have separate power of course you need the phantom power turned on in order to power the XLR mics but just wanted to show you that in case you're thinking of doing a YouTube channel yourself. Uh, this is the equipment that I have. Not Certainly not saying it's the best equipment out there. You couldn't do better. Uh, but it's worked very well for my purposes. And it's a rather inexpensive setup. Certainly you can just go with a straight USB mic. But uh, I ended up sounding kind of tinny on those as you'll see in some of my videos. So I definitely prefer this to give some depth and uh, to the voice which certainly helps keep people engaged in the videos and the interactions so hope you've enjoyed this and uh, let's go take a look at the manual here real quick and I will switch over to the AT2020 so you can hear the difference between here the you have it this is my voice on the AT2020 using the UR22 USB audio face with the audio going through 
XSplit, and it sounds pretty much exactly the same going through OBS. The only way you can really edit your audio outside of that is using something like Audacity, and you can add compression and that type of thing. I have a equalizer coming, and I'm very excited about that, and I will definitely do a follow-up video to show you the difference in the sound once that interface is added. But why I went with the UR22, because it allows a very high sampling rate with a very low cost. It's probably the cheapest that USB interface that you can get into uh, that will allow you to get up to the 192 kilohertz. So if you're interested in just doing voice work and that type of thing, that can be really important for you. So this is what I just showed you. These are the two lines that I use on the front where I have my splitter going into my mic. They're labeled mic line, so you really can't screw that up, which is nice. And then you have your 48 volt indicator light here, and this is just telling you if you need phantom power, which on the AT2020 you do, then you're going to want to make sure that that switch on the back is turned on and you'll have an LED there. Your peak is very important as well. If you see this start going red, that means your input gains here. If you're using both, if you're just using one channel, um, then you would want to turn those knobs down so that you're not going above the peak otherwise you'll start hearing distortion and things uh, your USB uh, indicator lets you know if you're running on USB power because you can also run on 5 volt uh, but you don't need that adapter you can simply just run through the USB interface and there is a switch on the back uh, to choose between either or and this is the headphone jack where I have my M40X's these are my favorite headphones, but I know there are certainly more expensive ones and better ones out there, but I absolutely love them, and they're perfect, and you can hear yourself um, with the phone's volume. Once you turn that up, you can hear yourself as you talk so that you know you're getting good audio uh, between you and the audience. So kind of taking a deeper look in the manual here, uh, this is kind of what I just went through, but you can see this other, the high Z, and that's for if you're plugging instruments and that type of thing in, which I'm not, but if you were, obviously you would be using this setup slightly different than me. Uh, don't think there's anything else that we need to cover here. You have your doll and uh, mix here. Next, we have the back, and I don't really use a whole lot on this yet, but the new interface that I have will. Um, what what you can do here is obviously add additional like speakers, external powered speakers here. Uh, if you wanted to add additional instruments and that type of thing, you've got your MIDI connections. Here's your USB power I talked about, so it goes from here into your computer and your 48 volt phantom power offer on. Uh, again, depending on the type of mic you have um, is whether you would need to have this on, but for the AT2020 you certainly do. So the MIDI out transmits MIDI signals from the computer and the in uh, back in, so uh, pretty obvious there. And depending on if you're adding additional interfaces and things, you can utilize those. But like I said, I don't have anything connected on the back right now. I'm just simply using these two here and that's it that's as simple as this is and then here you show you can get to the 192 kilohertz with 256 samples to 8192 samples so it's a really good interface for the money are there better ones absolutely but i love it i think it gives a good quality sound to my voice and especially for the money and when you add additional equipment, because you know you got to geek out on this stuff, it just gets geekier. Anything that I get into, so now I've got additional equalizers and things coming. And as I get that stuff, I'll show it to you and show the difference and how I have them set. But for this purpose, you really can't screw this up, which is another reason why I love it. You've got a very limited amount of controls. If you're just getting into this stuff, you don't want to see this gigantic panel with 500 knobs and buttons because you won't know what the hell to do with it, and you're going to constantly struggle with not getting sound and that type of thing. And I learned very early on, which I'm sure some of those audio experts will laugh at this, to always test your audio before you start doing videos or recording. Do do tests and then do a test again right before you start to make sure everything's set up correctly because lo and behold someone will walk by to grab something off the printer which is by my uh, interface device and hit a knob and I'll be recording a nice video where it went 
perfect and I did it in one run and find out I have no audio. And that's just how things go with this or my USB interface isn't working correctly in the computer. So always test uh, to make sure you have sound because that can be really annoying. But certainly keeping it simple at first will allow you to easily be able to fix any issues. And then as you get more and more geeky into it, you can add that complexity and get some added benefit from it as well. So I got asked the question about my audio equipment. I wanted to do a quick video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave your comments below. Let me know the experiences that you have with audio. If you are an audio expert, if you have some recommended devices, I would love to hear it because I'm geeking out more and more on this stuff. Until next time.